Many wildflowers and crops are insect pollinated. As such, pollinating insects provide a service to wildflowers, garden plants, herbs, vegetables and crops. They're really a vital agent for producing our food and maintaining landscapes. So-called weeds in field margins, rough ground, scrub and unimproved areas provide pollinators with food. And these semi-natural areas also provide nesting opportunities and shelter. On the other hand, intensively managed crops, particularly in very large fields, lack cover, shelter and food. In agricultural landscapes, semi-natural habitats are vital to provide a wide range of flower species. Maintaining flower-rich habitats is important as it ensures flowers are present throughout the season, provides food for a wide range of pollinators and provides both nectar-rich and pollen-rich flowers. Clovers and other legumes have protein-rich pollen, which is vital for reproduction and larvae development. Many legumes occur widely in natural grasslands. Plants like red and wild white clover Bird's foot trefoil, medics and vetches. These can be sown into existing grass swards and, with their nitrogen-fixing properties, can reduce the need for inorganic fertilizers. Nectar-rich flowers such as borage and phacelia are also important to provide energy to power flight. Such flowers are often included in seed mixes for pollinators. The scabious family includes a range of species typically found on natural grasslands. Different species of scabious occur in habitats with different moisture content and soil pH levels. Natural grasslands and other habitats, unlike crops, have different plants flowering at different times, which provides a continuous source of food throughout the season. Bumblebees will build a nest in undisturbed, dry, grassy or mossy areas and they often occupy disused small mammal burrows. To establish a nest, a nearby food source is essential to provide nectar and pollen for emerging worker bees, which help build up the colony. Over 70% of crops rely on insect pollination, and insect pollinated crops are particularly important in providing vitamins and minerals. Some crops, such as tomatoes and blueberries, require something called buzz pollination. Solitary bees and bumblebees buzz pollinate, but honeybees can't. It's therefore vital to protect wild bees. Here you can hear the bumblebee releasing pollen by using high frequency vibrations of their wing muscles. This is what's known as buzz pollination. To help pollinators, you can sow pollen and nectar-rich mixes. These oriental poppies are included in such mixes, but common poppies used to be widespread in arable fields, along with things like corn marigolds and corn flowers. These are now relatively rare species, but poppies and corn marigolds still occur in arable maca. You can sow both wild and cultivated plants to attract and feed pollinating insects using annual or perennial species. Spring is when bumblebee queens emerge from hibernation and go in search of food to establish nests, and when many solitary bee species emerge and breed. Many shrubs and trees blossom in spring and provide a vital source of food for emerging pollinators. Early in the season, dandelions are one of the most widespread flowers, providing foraging resources throughout towns and countryside. Flower shape influences visiting insects, Dandelions and crocuses have open flowers, which are easily accessible to most bees. Comfrey, on the other hand, has deep flowers that can only be accessed by longer tongue species like the garden and carda bumblebee. Some short tongue bumblebees, however, cheat. They can pierce a hole in the flower and rob the nectar without pollinating the flower. While feeding, bumblebees and other pollinating insects collect and transfer pollen, fertilizing flowers. Bees and the work that they do are essential to our future well-being. By following these simple guidelines, you'll not only benefit them, you'll benefit all of us. <laughs>